How many of you have seen videos like this one showing dry brushing or massaging as a miracle cure for cellulite? If you think that these treatments actually work, then I'm sorry to break it to you, but they don't. But don't worry, in this video, I'm going to go over what cellulite is, why treatments like dry brushing don't actually work, and what science-backed options can help cellulite. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this one. Let's start with the basics. What is cellulite? Cellulite occurs when fibrous bands called septae, they tether the skin to the underlying musculature or fascia, and it pulls that skin down, which then causes the fat to herniate through the septae. You can imagine like a net-like mesh with little you know, openings where the fat is being pushed through this net, and this causes that dimply appearance of the cellulite or that lumpy look that cellulite often has. About 90% of women will have cellulite, and this is regardless of your body weight, your size, and your ethnicity. So cellulite is very, very common. And I think one of the main reasons why it bothers women so much is because there's these unrealistic beauty standards that we're supposed to be completely smooth and perfect, right? So we're not supposed to have pores, we're not supposed to have stretch marks or cellulite. However, all of these things are just normal parts of being a human. And while there are treatments that can definitely help soften the look of cellulite, there is no cure or no way to completely get rid of them. Cellulite is also genetically based, and I know that we can blame our genetics for everything, pretty much, but skinny people can get cellulite, overweight people can get cellulite. It isn't completely correlated to weight. However, if you are predisposed to cellulite and you do become overweight and you do gain weight, then your cellulite is going to look worse because now you have more fat that pushes through that net-like septae. Unfortunately, though the biggest misconception is that cellulite is all about fat and that's simply not true. There's a lot of shame associated with it because a photo like this means that you are fat because you don't have discipline and that's why you have cellulite. When in fact cellulite is a structural issue and it's a, an issue with the connective tissue not fat. So this is why losing weight alone doesn't always help to get rid of cellulite. This is also why thin and skinny people have cellulite because it's a connective tissue problem, not a fat problem. Also remember that while fluid accumulation during pregnancy can make your cellulite look worse, fluid accumulation is not the cause of cellulite. So drop a comment below and let me know if you have tried any cellulite treatments like dry brushing and massage and let me know if they helped or didn't help. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you can stay tuned for up-to-date videos. What doesn't work for cellulite? Now, these treatments that I'm going to talk about are super popular and they're all over social media, but science shows that they won't really get you real lasting results. So the first one is called dry brushing. Dry brushing is basically you take a brush and you kind of scrub your skin. And the concept behind dry brushing is that it's, it's stimulating the circulation and detoxing your skin. Cellulite is not a toxin problem. And sure, fluid accumulation, like I said, can exacerbate the look of cellulite, which if you do a lymphatic massage or dry brushing, you can kind of help improve that circulation to decrease that fluid buildup. However, these are not going to be long lasting results. No amount of scrubbing is actually going to fix those fibrous bands. Related to dry brushing, like I already mentioned, is massage. There are some massage spas that will claim that they will do a cellulite massage. And these are the lymphatic deep massages that really kind of press deep to help with lymphatic circulation and blood flow. And very similarly to dry brushing, it's not going to fix the underlying fibrous septae that's causing the cellulite in the first place. I mean, honestly, it does feel good to have a massage, but temporarily it might look a little bit more polished. However, that's not going to give you long lasting results. And this is very similar to other massaging modalities like gua sha, cupping, etc. In order to make this video, I even looked up multiple different studies and actually I couldn't find any true scientific studies to back up massage or dry brushing as being effective for cellulite. Castor oil is also another treatment that's been touted to help with cellulite in combination with massage or dry brushing. Again, there's just no scientific basis for using castor oil. It's not going to fix that fibrous septae. So there is mild, mild evidence that caffeine creams could help with the look of cellulite. Why they help? I don't know. Retinoids can also cause skin tightening, which can make the skin look smoother. However, neither caffeine nor retinoids really address the underlying issue of the fibrous septae, which causes cellulite in the first place. So while you can have some benefits from these two ingredients, it's not a home run. If you've tried any of these creams or dry brushing or massage, comment below, let me know. I would love to hear about your experience. One of the most common questions I get about cellulite is will weight loss and exercise help? So if I lose weight, will my cellulite go away? The answer is maybe, but it's not guaranteed. So obviously if you're over 
overweight, you're going to have more fat that herniates through the septae. So if you lose weight, you're going to have less fat. But if you lose weight too rapidly, this can actually make cellulite sometimes look worse because now you also have skin laxity that's contributing to that lumpy look. So if you're going to lose weight, make sure you lose it slowly and not super fast. Additionally, with weight loss, you can't really spot reduce. So I can't just lose weight in my thighs. And if you're going to lose weight, you're going to lose weight all over. And for some patients, the thighs are pretty resistant to weight loss. Just keep in mind that cellulite is not a fat problem, it's a connective tissue problem. So while weight loss might help, it's just not guaranteed. On the flip side, like I said before, weight gain can make your cellulite look worse because now you have more fat poking through the net. As for exercise, of course, it has so many health benefits, not just for cellulite, but to tone the muscle and it has so many other longevity benefits. If you tone the muscle, it will help that leg or that area look a lot smoother, obviously. Again, though, it's not going to help incredibly with the cellulite appearance. So while exercise is, is a key part for skin health overall and health overall, it's not going to make that much of a difference when it comes to your cellulite. Let's move on to treatments that can actually work. The only way to get rid of cellulite is to cut the septate that is causing the skin to be pulled down, giving you that appearance. The cutting of the septate, this term is called subcision. And we often employ subcision for like acne scars or a variety of other types of scars. With cellulite, we want to cut those bands so that the skin pops back up. Subcision for cellulite helps the dimple cellulite, so the discrete little dimples, but it's not going to help that much with banana roll or skin laxity that also makes cellulite look worse. Usually from any sort of subcision of your of the septae, the results last about three to five years, but the cellulite sometimes does come back, especially if you have a very strong genetic predisposition towards it. The original form of subcision was through a device called Salfina, which some of my colleagues still use. And Salfina basically performed subcision, so it cut the septae under the skin, but there was significant down time and it, it was quite painful. So there's a newer alternative called Aveli, which is what I use in my practice. And Aveli is a minimally invasive treatment where we use the instrument to actually cut the septae underneath the skin. This then releases the dimple and allows the skin to pop back up. In order to do this treatment, I do use a type of anesthesia called tumescent anesthesia, which is where we inject a large amount of liquid into that area to provide relief. Because of course, without anesthesia, it would be painful. The recovery is a few weeks mainly because you get so much bruising. So whenever we're cutting this fibrous septae, we're also going to be injuring some of the blood vessels in the area. This is going to give you bruising and bruising can last about two to three weeks. But the result you see from a valley is pretty instant because those dimples are released immediately. Like I said, subcision methods like Aveli, they're only going to work if you have these discrete dimples. They're not going to work if you have banana rolls or skin laxity, but I will discuss what treatments can help that, so stay tuned. Quo was an injectable treatment that was specifically designed for cellulite, and this was, I think, back in about 2021, and it got a lot of hype. We were also very excited about Quo because unlike, you know, subcision, this was just an injection, which is a lot easier to perform, but it has been discontinued from the market. And so what Quo did was that it had an enzyme and this enzyme broke down the connective tissue or the septae that caused cellulite and usually needed about a series of three treatments. However, this enzyme also targeted the connective tissue within the blood vessels. So patients would get massive, massive amounts of bruising. Sometimes this bruising would last like three to four weeks. And because of of this, I actually stopped using it after a few patients and it's also been discontinued from the market. They might modify it or they might come back out with a newer injectable that is perhaps more specific to the connective tissue within the septae and hopefully spares the connective tissue within blood vessels. There's a newer treatment which uses acoustic wave therapy to help with cellulite. So it works by sending sound waves through the skin, so it's technically non-invasive, and then these sound waves kind of shatter the septae that causes the cellulite. There is no cutting, so it's not invasive. There's not really that much bruising. It doesn't really affect the blood vessels significantly. There are multiple treatments are needed for benefit, and the current device that uses acoustic wave therapy is called Resonic. There might be others as well. I think the reduction in cellulite is about 30 to 50% with acoustic wave therapy, and it is something that you would need maintenance because cellulite can come back. There is thankfully no downtime with acoustic wave therapy, but I also don't think it's as effective as something like a valley, which literally just cuts the fibrous septae. If you're finding this video helpful, by the way, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends and family who would find it helpful. Since cellulite 
Jelly White has that cottage cheese appearance. One of the other treatments that I like to do is to actually inject collagen stimulating filler into those dimples. So I usually use polylactic acid or Sculptra or something called calcium hydroxyapatite, also known as Radius. I actually have a whole video on collagen stimulatory fillers that you can use. They're also called biostimulatory fillers. When we inject these biostimulatory fillers into those dimples, it causes collagen production. And over time, it can help fill that dimple, smoothening out the appearance of the skin. I also like to use Sculptra and Radius for the banana roll, which is that roll right underneath the butt that a lot of us women don't like. And so the banana roll is a combination of excessive adipose tissue, meaning excessive fat accumulation, as well as skin laxity. You know, sometimes I will have to do cool sculpting for the banana roll as well. And I have a whole video on cool sculpting. So if you want to check that out, but when I do a combination of cool sculpting plus the biostimulatory fillers, we can really tighten that skin up. Similarly to kind of weight loss and cellulite, liposuction doesn't help with the appearance of cellulite either. If anything, if done improperly, liposuction can actually make cellulite look worse. Again, because if you're removing the fat, you're also going to have more skin laxity and that can contribute to a worsening appearance. Cool sculpting, which I briefly just mentioned, is a non-invasive way of removing fat. So I like to use cool sculpting to remove fat in the banana roll, like I just said, or in the inner thighs, sometimes even the underarms, and of course the belly area. However, cool sculpting doesn't really, again, reduce the appearance of cellulite, and that's just because Remember, cellulite's not a fat problem, it's a connective tissue problem. I do have a whole video on cool sculpting, so you can check it out. I love using cool sculpting in the right patient. Not everyone's the right patient, but this video kind of goes into detail regarding this treatment. Other devices that are similar to cool sculpting, but a little different. So there's like uh, devices that stimulate muscle growth, the most popular being M-Sculpt. And then we just got a device called Pure Impact in our office. And what these devices do is that they use electric or magnetic muscle stimulation. So they basically send waves, contract those muscles, so that you can have a toned appearance. So again, just like exercise, you know, muscle toning can make the area look smoother, but you can still have cellulite. So to recap, cellulite is not caused by toxins. It's not caused by fluid accumulation. It is a genetic uh, condition that 90% of women have. And it's because of this connective tissue problem where we're having septa that pulled the skin down, causing the fat to herniate through. Dry brushing, massage, they don't really help. They might feel good, but they don't really help. The treatments that do help include a valley, subcision, or acoustic wave therapy, or using fillers to uh, fill those dimples or tighten the skin. Most people who have cellulite also have stretch marks, and these are both equally concerning issues that women have. So if you have stretch marks and you're contemplating on buying these kinds of miracle creams, please don't. Please instead watch my video on stretch marks where I review what works and what doesn't. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.